dans le cadre des textes favoris des invités de l'Institut des études anciennes et médiévales, voici M. Alexander Free de la Ludwig Maximilians Universität München. At the beginning of the fifth book of the novel Leucippe and Cleitophon by Achilles Tatios, the first person narrator enters the city of Alexandria. Upon seeing the city, he is immediately fascinated by its radiant beauty, Sungate, as it is called, and was instantly struck by the splendid beauty of the city, which filled my eyes with delight. From the Sungate to the Moongate, these are the guardian divinities of the entrances, led a straight double row of columns, about the middle of which lies open part of the town, and in it so many streets that walking in them you would fancy yourself abroad while still at home. Going a few hundred yards further, I came to the quarter called after Alexander, where I saw a second town. The splendor of this was cut into squares, for there was a row of columns intersected by another as long at right angles. I tried to cast my eyes down every street, but my gaze was still unsatisfied, and I could not grasp all the beauty of the spot at once. Some parts I saw, some I was on the point of seeing, some I earnestly desired to see, some I could not pass by. That what I actually saw kept my gaze fixed, while that which I expected to see would drag it on to the next. I explored therefore every street, and at last, my vision, unsatisfied, exclaimed in weariness, Ah, my eyes, we are beaten! Two things struck me especially strange and extraordinary. It was impossible to decide which was the greatest, the size of the place or its beauty, the city itself or its inhabitants. For the former was larger than a continent, the latter outnumbered a whole nation. Looking at the city, I doubted whether any race of men could ever fill it. Looking at the inhabitants, I wondered whether any city could ever be found large enough to hold them all. The balance seemed exactly even. For mapping out the topography of Alexandria, this passage has always been of importance. Since the city is difficult to study archaeologically due to modern superstructures, the literary tradition has always been of particular importance for the reconstruction of the former cityscape. The passage presented, however, provides only limited information for such an investigation. Rather, however, its high proportion of stylistic elaboration becomes apparent. The text does present itself as an autopsy report and thus conveys a sense of authenticity. However, the information given is basically of little significance for the reconstruction of a real cityscape, yet all the more so for the rhetorical vigor of the novel's author. In the passage, the reader witnesses the representation of Alexandria through the eyes of a first-person narrator who lets him take part in his feelings and experiences. In this way, the reader does not receive a general overview of the city, as the geographer Strabo aims for in his description of Alexandria, but rather experiences it in a limited way from the narrator's point of view. What is described is very vague. It refers to a network of streets and porticos which are only specified by the landmarks of the Sungate, the Moongate, and the Square of Alexander. The narrator thus merely provides a simplified image of the ancient city, which creates gaps between the landmarks. These gaps, however, leave room for interpretation and imagination by the reader and create the impression of a vast space. Distances are just as impossible to estimate as possible further landmarks, which according to other ancient testimonies were located between the Sungate and the Moongate. The speaker's main concern, on the other hand, is the mental image of Alexandria as a city of beauty, Tokalos, and size, Tomegetos. Thus, the city level is stretching. The speaker must travel several stadia to get from one city gate to another, and the sights of the place fascinate and enchant their observer. Alexandria is a city of superlatives and exuberant splendor. By avoiding detailed descriptions in combination with a focus on universally known architectural forms, as well as locally distinctive sites, the narrative succeeds in evoking an image of Alexandria that immediately seems plausible to the reader. In this respect, it is precisely the gaps that create a sense of plausibility by allowing the reader's own imagination to wander through the streets. The text has all the qualities of rhetorical and agea in that it expresses a sense of perception in words as if one were actually there. The speaker succeeds in this effect by his descriptions of sensual impressions, which he names constantly, which gains in tempo and receives its climax and summary conclusion through the helpless exclamation of Timoi Neni Kemeta. Ah, my eyes, we are beaten, which unresistingly yields to the receptoric overstimulation. The speaker links his sensory impressions with emotions and thus drags the reader into the text. 
the reader becomes an eyewitness himself for whom the passage represents an intense and emotional experience. The form of narration matches the content. Pace and density also threaten to overwhelm the reader. Like the content, the form serves to channel what is experienced. The text thus gives a convincing and vivid picture of Alexandria by its power of language alone, which completely proves its stylistic rhetorical elegance. The fact that the description can be taken seriously without question as an authentic eyewitness account marks it out as a rhetorical masterpiece. C'était Monsieur Alexander Frey de la Ludwig Maximilians Universität München. Merci d'être resté avec nous jusqu'à la fin du balado et soyez à l'affût pour le prochain épisode des textes favoris de l'Institut des études anciennes et médiévales. À bientôt.